excuse me, for the time that is ours to share, I want to talk very briefly uh, from the book of Jonah. From the book of Jonah, chapter number three. Jonah. Jonah. The chapter three. Verses 1 through 3, uh, from the New International Version of the Bible, you will find these words. Then the Lord, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. And we're going to stop right there. From the first part of the third verse, for a second reading, it says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord. And today I want to talk about obeying the Lord. Amen. Obeying the Lord. Many of us are familiar with the story of Jonah. Because it is a story that is taught to us uh, even from the days of our preschool days. Amen. We learn some version of Jonah's story. And if we don't remember anything else, we remember the part that Jonah was caught up in the belly. And we say of a whale. But we don't understand that it was a great fish. Regardless of how you remember or how it was taught, the story of Jonah is nothing that we have not heard of throughout our time and maturity in the things of God. As we remember no, uh, Jonah, Jonah was a man who was called by God. When you look at chapter number one, it says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Jonah, being a man of God, Jonah, the one who was supposed to be used by God, the Bible says that he heard the word of the Lord. He heard the, Lord, the word of the Lord. But the question is, what did he do? Jonah did not mistake the voice for another voice. He did not mistake uh, uh, the word of the Lord of what he was being asked to do. But when he heard the word of the Lord the first time, the Bible says that he ran away from the Lord. He ran away from the Lord. And many times, we look negatively upon that statement. Uh -huh. He ran away from the Lord. But you know what? If all of us were honest with ourselves, uh -huh. you don't even have to be honest with one another. Just be honest with yourself and be honest with the Lord. There are times in all of our lives where God will give us a clear and specific instruction, but we run away from God. It doesn't matter why you ran. Yeah. Because when it comes to God, there's either obedience or disobedience. Yeah. <laughs> All right. so, so, so many times people will de debate, well, why did Jonah run from God? You know what? It really doesn't matter. That's right. the, what matters is the fact that he heard the word of God and he ran. There are times in all of our lives where we run away from God. But get this. When it comes to God, God is omnipresent, meaning that God is everywhere. And so the foolish thing about trying to run away from God is that the very moment you think you're running away from God, you're running right into Him. You think you're running away from God, well, 
but you're running right into it. Another way to say it is, you know, when, when you perceive it is getting ready to rain, and, and you are in such a hurry to beat the rain, and you think that you have that you have outrun the rainstorm. But then as soon as you get to your traveling destination, you run right into some more rain. That's how it is trying to run away from God. Is that the, when you think that you're getting away from God, you realize that the further you run away from God, the further you're really running to God. Jonah heard the word, but yet he ran. But you know what? Whenever you try to operate in disobedience, whenever you try to run or hide from God, all right, all right. We, we quickly realize that, you know what? There's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. Because if we even try to make our bed in hell. Right. The Bible says he's there too. That's That's Jonah tried to get on a ship uh -huh. and go to what seemed like the other end of the world. But you see, God was there yeah. on the ocean. Uh -huh. yes, he was. Uh -huh. God was there moving in the sea right. and called such a great storm. And those that were on the boat uh -huh. decided that they needed to cast lots to determine what in the world is going on because this is not an ordinary storm. This is not a, a, a springtime rain. This is not a hurricane or a tornado. There must be somebody's God behind this storm. Oh, Amen. And so when they cast lots, the lot fell on Jonah. They said, Jonah, what is it that's going on? And why is this storm so bad? Jonah, in other words, replied back and they already knew that he was running away from his God. And so he said, just throw me overboard and everything will be all right. You see, God has a way of getting and capturing our attention. God has sometimes a subtle way, but sometimes it is just as dramatic as the water and the wind in the middle of the sea to let us know that God is still God, that God is our maker, God is our creator, God is our sustainer, and God has a purpose and a will for each one of our lives. But the question number two is, why do we try to run away from God? Uh -huh. Sometimes God will call us from a place of comfort uh -huh. into a place of discomfort. Uh -huh. God will call us from the familiar and cause us to go into the unfamiliar. Sometimes God will mess up the plans that we have for our lives. God will sometimes call you from a place of, 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 of abundance to sometimes what seems to be a place of poverty. God will call us. He will expand our minds. He will cause our thinking to change. He will cause us to go in places where we would never want to go. Uh -huh. Do things that we would never want to do. Yes, interact with people that we would not otherwise want to interact with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. The wickedness of Nineveh came up before God. Yes. In chapter number four, uh, Jonah says, well, I, I know the type of God that you are. And, 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 and Nineveh was a wicked city. Uh -huh. and, 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 but I know that you are a gracious God. Uh -huh. I, I know that you are a forgiving God. Yeah. And, 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 but, 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 but none of us, their sin and their wickedness was so great. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Jonah 
and said, I know what type of God you are. Amen. Have we ever put ourselves in the place of God? Oh, I, I, I'm not going to witness uh, to that young lady because you, we all know what she did. I, 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 I'm not going to give an encouraging word to that young man because we all know what he's doing. I, I, I'm not going to go to that side of town because only certain people live on that side of town. And, and I don't want my good name and my good reputation to be hindered because I was caught out in the project. Or I was caught out trying to witness to somebody else or to give somebody an encouraging word. Many times we find ourselves like Jonah trying to be God. And I'm so glad on today that God did not die and make us Holy Ghost Jews. That not only God will save who he wants to save, God will deliver who he wants to deliver, God will transform whoever he wants to transform. And who are we to judge what God is doing? Because if the truth be told, at one point, each one of us was getting ready to bust hell wide open with gasoline drawers on. Jonah 
to turn to God in prayer. Amen. And after he got through talking to the Lord, chapter number three, and I know I'm jumping around, but chapter number three, it says that the second time, the word came to Job. Notice how God does. Although Jonah had went through all that stuff, yeah. trying to go out and drop it, yeah. although he had been through, you know, yeah. been thrown overboard, although he had been uh, placed in the belly of this great big fish, when God's word came back to Jonah the second time, it was the same thing he said the first time. Yeah. The thing about trying to disobey God is, is that you know what? If God wants you to do something, he still, what he said on yesterday, he's going to say it today. And what he says today, if we wake up and see tomorrow, he'll say the same thing tomorrow. But many times we spend years trying to run away from God. God, I don't want to do this. God, I'm not ready to give up that. God this, God that. Okay, God will wait for you. But when he gets, but when he gets his hands on you, the same thing he told you on yesterday. Because Jonah's obedience was not only so that Nineveh could have been saved, but Jonah needed to be saved in his mind again too. Jonah needed to understand that matters of salvation and damnation were not in his hands. Many times we don't look at things with that level of seriousness. But Jonah needed to understand that his obedience to the word of God does open up and fan flames a wildfire of repentance for the nation or the city of Nineveh. In the same way, when we obey God, when we obey God, what we are literally doing is opening up the floodgates for everyone that we come in contact with to see the light. Y'all said a few moments ago, this little light of mine. When people, when, when people in darkness see our little itty bitty light, they're saying, what must I do Amen. to be saved? When, when they hear us, they hear our testimonies, they'll come running and saying, I, I'm ready to make a change in my life. When they see that we respond to things differently yeah. All right. than everybody else, they'll come running and saying, I'm ready to make a change in my life. Okay. If gossip, if rumors, if bad news can travel fast, good news can travel even faster. All right. If we let it. Jonah was transformed to a man who ran away from God. Amen. To a man in this situation that was used by God. Amen. Because even though God, Nineveh's wickedness came before God. When Nineveh heard the word of God, Nineveh repented. And God had mercy. Today we are here. Not because it's on the calendar to be here. We're not here just because it is our habit, our routine, or our tradition to be here. But, but the reason why we are here is because we recognize that in our lives that we were once just like Jonah. In our lives, we were once like Nineveh. But God, with God's good self, decided to look down upon us. He decided to transform us from a state of nothingness to a state of being heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. The reason why we're here is because <clears throat> Jesus, being the Son of God, was obedient to the Word of God, Amen. came down on this earth 
and, 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 and offered himself up. Offered himself up so that we might have the right to the tree of life. Thank you. We should never take that for granted. That's right. Because in the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. The first tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the other was the tree of life. Um, God told Adam and Eve, said, you, you, you can eat of, of anything you want, but leave the tree of the knowledge of good and evil alone. All right. All right. But you see, humanity's weakness opened the door for sin to enter into the world. And so God being the good God and the just God, because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he had to withhold the tree of life. But because God was so gracious and so merciful, even in the book of Genesis, God says, you know what? It's going to be appointed for a man to die. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm going to create a solution Thank you, sir. Amen. for the sin problem of the world. Wow. Come on, and that solution was on a hill far away yeah. where it stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. On that cross, where humanity met divinity, it was at that cross where we were given once again the right to the tree of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever the Jews and the Gentiles, whosoever will, even the Ninevites, whosoever will, even all of us that believe on him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. As we gather today for communion, we keep in mind that there are times in our lives where we have to make a choice between obedience and disobedience. Doesn't matter why we're disobedient. Disobedience is just disobedience. You might have a good reason, but you know, disobedience is disobedience. But today, we gather in obedience to the word of the Lord. He said, he didn't tell us how often we should do it. But the only thing he said was, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Wow. This time I'm going to ask uh, uh, ministers.